Why does it feel like every EDM artist has their own label now? With EDM evolving over the years and decades, we're at a point now where it seems like once you get to a certain point of popularity, you sort of just naturally make your own label. And why is that? We've got Pegboard Nerds making Nerd Nation. We've got Chime making Rushdown. We've got now Tokyo Machine making Chompo. We've got uh, Bitbird by Son Holo. We've got Joy Time by Marshmallow. We've got Slander's Heaven Scent. We've got Rez's Hypnovision. It's just going crazy. And I must say, I love it. As someone that actually comes from a schooling business background, I actually do have a BBA with a specialization in marketing. One thing that is kind of hammered in time and time again in business school is that competition is good for everyone, at least generally speaking. And I think that's super true for music labels as a whole. I would say, let's first of all, look at the inverse of it and see how horrible that would be. Let's say you have only the big ones and maybe we'll include Monster Cat here, but like a Monster Cat, a Spinin, an Anjuna, an Armada, sort of like the bigger EDM labels here. If there were only those, it would suck. Imagine everything that sort of, I wouldn't say culminated from Monster Cat, but stuff that has overlap. Let's say like Bitbird, Nerd Nation, like Chompo. Let's say these kind of um, have this overlap with Monster Cat. If all of those labels only released five tracks a week, that, that wouldn't be, that I wouldn't like that. But like imagine the big ones, imagine like the big house records. Like imagine there's only, let's say five big house songs or house songs that come out a week. That is it. That is not a lot of variety at all. Monopolies are absolutely horrible for the consumer, me and you listening to the music. It is it is not good for our enjoyment. I personally just love the variety in labels because all of them aim to do something slightly different and have their own flares and styles to them. Obviously, you've got the likes of Rushdown being a very color-based centric label uh, with stuff like, I don't know, Bitbird being a little bit more out there, a little bit more on the weirder kind of trippy side of stuff. Like even Chompo now having their own battle pass of sorts is just such a unique idea that wouldn't exist if we didn't have all of these sort of offshoot labels of these these own independent projects. But all of this so far is things that you sort of know and sort of at least inherently understand and or agree with. But the biggest reason I sort of wanted to make this video and talk about this is because I see a lot of conversation around, ah, oh, I'm sad that this song isn't a blank song. It's not a Bitbird song. It's not a Monster Cat song. It's not a Heaven Sent track or, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is a, a Chompa release or I can't believe this is a Joy Time record. I don't like it because it's on this label. It's on Dim Mac. It's on Spinning. And that's just not a good way to look at it. But don't get me wrong, I do like having healthy conversations around the release of artists on certain labels where a great example is Cloud Nun choosing to uh, have his debut albums and his debut LP releasing on Seeking Blue rather than Monster Cat. That was a topic conversation that I opened. I was like, that's very fascinating to me that Cloud Nun, after working so extensively with Monster Cat in the past, and yeah, he's done a couple other labels here and there, but to have his debut album be a Seeking Blue record, it was something that I thought was interesting and thought was open for conversation. But you didn't hear me say, ah, I really wanted it to be on Monster Cat because it doesn't make a difference if it is or isn't. Yeah, each label has their own ecosystem and stuff. And yeah, the new Cloud Done record won't be voted on by like a Monster Cat boat and or won't be for the best of Monster Cat by the year end or uh, won't be on the mix contest or anything like that. Like I get that ecosystem part of it, but it, it's Cloud Nun's music as it is. So just enjoy it regardless of where it is. It is fascinating to me that someone can think of an artist and think of a record right away and go, I am not gonna like this song or I'm gonna have a certain opinion on it before I've even heard it based off of where it's going. And I get having a bit of an inclination of it. There are certain things where I go, okay, yes, if I know it's gonna be on a certain label, I know they have a history of maybe not having the greatest of qualities. Like I will use, I'll use Dim Mac as an example, where a lot of stuff on there I feel like isn't the highest of quality and they're shorter and they have a certain style to them that I don't personally resonate with. But when a new song like from Nitro Fun comes out on Dim Mac, I don't immediately go, oh, it's on Dim Mac. I know I'm gonna hate it. I go, oh, another Nitro Fun song. Let's, let's listen to it. It. So if anything, in the end, this is honestly a bit of a calling cry to be like, let's have more labels. Let's do it. Let's 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 have some more competition and increase the quality and quantity of music being released. And also a calling cry for you that's saying, ah, I'm not gonna like the song because it's on a label. D don't. Don't, don't do it. 
I think this is potentially a bigger issue in maybe the Monster Cat community more so than others, just because uh, Monster Cat has a very, very, very dedicated community of people that rightfully want to see artists releasing on a label that they very enjoy. That is a great thing to want to have and something that I also want to see artists I enjoy on the label I really enjoy and within the ecosystem. But it sometimes gets to a point where it's just unhealthy. In the little bit of conversations that I've had with kind of managers and other people that work for labels, which isn't a very ton to be fully transparent and honest, is that <laughs> especially with artists that are on doing non monster yet things, it's always like a let's not make this like a, a them versus us kind of thing. It's not a it's not a monster cat versus this. It's not a monster cat versus that. Like let's 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 try not to do that and let's try to stay away from that. And so it's very fascinating that in the in the few conversations I've had with other uh, like behind the scenes uh, workers that they're all like they feel this inner, they feel this like this back and forth tug of war of trying to do something off specifically Monster Hunter, off of the bigger brands. So I think I'm just going to end this video with just saying, share the love, share the loves around, share the stream. If you love an artist, that is great. If you love a label, that is great. Let's listen to it all. Listen to what you really enjoy and let's not get too bogged down on where a song lands. Because in the end, for the most part, that's where the artist wants the song to be. I may not know why Cloud9 wanted their debut album to be on Seeking Blue, but they clearly wanted it to be there and not Monster Cat. And I'm great if Cloud Nun's great with that. But yeah, let me know what you think of this kind of conversation of labels here in the comment section below. I'd love to continue the dialogue there. This 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 video is more or less actually just a vessel for this sort of conversation. It's not so much a one-way thing, just you watching me kind of have an opinion on it. I actually want to open this up to lots of dialogue. And so be active in the comments. I will be for sure. And uh, other than that, uh, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.